Hi Lisa, this is Sarah from The Joyful Entrepreneur and Flourish, and I am here to do a screencast critique of your shop. And I'm super excited because I've done a lot of critiques and I haven't done a lot of card shops, so um, I myself used to be a paper crafter, so I always love to be able to look into other maker shops that did something similar to me. Although I didn't do cards, I would have loved to though. Um, they're so beautiful. I love handmade cards. Definitely a dying art. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about, let's get started with your branding. So branding is super important, and it's something that a lot of crafters or hobbyists, they don't think about, you know, having a brand when they open a shop because they don't think of themselves as a real business. And this is something that goes into, that I see actually a lot in handmade businesses is, uh, they, they don't feel like they actually, you know, own a business without having a physical store and things like that. So they don't, they kind of miss some of the steps that most business owners that were opening a business physically would, would make or take um, to get their business to where it needs to um, be profitable and be bringing people in. So that's kind of what I try to teach and flourish and here, of course, in these critiques is to make sure that you're looking at your, your online business as, as well as you're looking at, as you would, I should say, um, as, uh, that you would look at a physical business. So let's first start with branding. You want your branding to bring in your target audience, right? So I, I'm not real sure what, who your target audience is. If I had to just quickly guess, I would assume it's an older demographic, somebody who um, misses the actual um, um, act of sending a card actually through the mail or giving a card, a physical card, instead of something digital. Um, I would think that they would... Um, be very thoughtful, that they would um, be looking for something unique and special, um, kind of a keepsake, not something that's just disposable, which it seems like everything is nowadays. Um, perhaps somebody who likes to write. Um, somebody looking for that special something for a special occasion. So, you know, you want to look at your branding. Now, right off the bat, I think your branding is adorable. The colors kind of... Um, they seem very kiddish to me, almost um, babyish, like like it almost, if I was to look at it very quickly and then look away, I might think that I'm in a shop that sells children's um, clothing or children's items. So the colors are a little um, youthful, I guess you could say, but this is super cute. You have a lady, she's cutting out paper. Um, you have all the tools that you need here, your, your tape and your scissors, and I think that's a hole puncher, I think. <laughs> um, love it, love it, love it. Super cute, but it is cartoony. It is kind of with the pink and the blue. It is. It does give me a, a babyish kind of feel. Now, uh, but it looks like here you don't just have baby stuff. You have Mother's Day cards and, and other things, cards for men. So... Um, the colors I may question, I think I would probably question if it were me in my shop, um, but overall it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's a super cute name. The tagline is wonderful, hand stamped cards and paper crafts with a royal touch, perfect. Uh, very creative here with, with your avatar. So overall, I absolutely love your branding. Like I said, I may adjust, if it were me, I'd probably adjust the colors a little bit, but overall I think they're fantastic. Okay, I like that you have the crown on the B here. Super cute. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about certain sections in your shop as we go through your shop, okay? And, and this is these are certain sections that if you give a lot of attention to, it, it can bring in either more traffic, more sales, you'll start to convert better. Um, so those are the areas that we're gonna go over in this, this critique. Now, you've been in Flourish, so you're probably aware of what I'm going to talk about, um, so I'm just I might just be going through to check to make sure that you have everything you need. But if not, it'll be a good reminder um, that you might have an area that you could fix that will help bring in a lot more traffic or convert to sales. 
Okay, so we have this line right here. Now Etsy calls this line the tagline, like if you're actually in the dashboard and, and where, where you're um, inputting this data, Etsy lists that line as your tagline. It'll say like tagline and then you have to enter in that text. But you have your tagline here in your banner, right? So you don't need to put your tagline there. And if you did, it would kind of look funny because you have it here and then you have it here. But really this section, this line right here is specific to Google. Google uses not only your shop name, but this line right here to determine how to rank you in search. So if you know that, which it looks like you do, <laughs> if you know that you want to put in strong keywords, keywords that describe your items and describe what you sell, what your page is about. And you have that. You have hand stamped cards, personalized and custom pop up cards, which is awesome. The only thing I might change, again, um, when I do these critiques, I try to think about, I, well, I try to think, I feel kind of um, multiple personalities when I'm doing these critiques because I'm sitting in front of my computer and I want to look at it uh, from your customer standpoint. I also try to look at it from your uh, point of view. And then I also try to look at it from my point of view, not as a coach, but as a, if I was a seller and if I was selling this, how would I set it up? kind of a viewpoint. And then of course I look at it um, as your coach. But I think because you already have hand stamped cards here and if, if, if I were playing the part of your customer or if somebody who is searching for this, I don't think that they would type in hand stamped cards. I think they would be looking for handmade cards. Handmade cards, handcrafted cards, um, things like that. Now let's look, if I were to so if I just hit, put it in handmade, you can see handmade cards is a, is a very popular search term. So that's definitely, I think, what I would do. Now if we're going to put hand stamped, um, it isn't even coming up. See, it's not coming up there at all. Um, and, and what this does, what using this Etsy search tool does for me, it allows me to know. Now this is not all the answers in the world, you know, but but what it does is it shows me, hey, whatever I type in there and whatever auto populates up after shows me that these are the most current and po the most popular search terms that people are using when they go to type in those search bar, right? Because Etsy wants to populate what the most likely thing is that you're looking for based on what words you're searching for. Okay, and they do this by compiling all the information and, and saying, okay, well, everyone else that is typed in hand stamped, this is what they've tried to look for. All right, so I would change this hand stamped cards to handmade cards for sure. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and go down here. You do have your section titles listed in the right format. You have them from the smallest word down to the longest, which is beautiful. It flows well. It looks nice. It reduces um, any kind of disruption on the page, whereas other sellers kind of have them all choppy. This looks nice. So you're doing wonderful there. I like that you have these all organized in section titles by holidays, uh, by specific things. I think that that looks nice. You know, I go into some other shops and they would, they would have something like uh, handmade cards, pop-up cards, right? And then they would have all these different, um, all these things in each section. You have done well by um, separating them out. That's so important. It makes it easier on your customer and they really appreciate that. Also, these keywords that you have here for your section titles, that is also very important to both Etsy and Google for your SEO. So you have nice specific Keywords here, um, I think that will definitely help you in search. All right, we're going to skip over the main part of your shop. Uh, let's go down to your about section. Whoa. Where is your about? There it is. Okay, so we're going to talk about this. So you're missing a large portion of your about page, and this is important for SEO. Etsy came out about a year ago or so and said that they were changing uh, some things around the, the shop page and they, they went into detail about the about page and how important it was 
Um, and they made a statement saying that those sellers that had full and robust about pages would get a slight bump in ranking, okay? So you have half of the about page filled out. You have the nice text here, and you have a decent amount of text, which is nice. Um, I like that you list all of your, your links here, although you don't really need to list your uh, social media links because they're all right here, and these ones are clickable. Um, however, you're missing the picture slideshow, and that is half of the about section. So these are five slots that you have to put pictures in, and it's so important because what that does is it adds value to your product. So if people see you, a picture of you sitting at your desk, stamping your cards or folding your paper or whatever, you know, gluing your embellishments together, building your pop-up box, that, that automatically makes your cards worth more. Because now they're seeing this is, I mean, they know it's handmade, but it's one thing to, to read that it's handmade and it's another to actually see it being done, right? They see the process of that. Now, all of a sudden, that card is worth so much more to them. This is not something that was constructed in a in a warehouse or on a conveyor belt. This is this is little legit done in 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 your home, in Lisa's home at her table with glue and scissors and so you want to show that, show pictures of your workspace, pictures of your studio, pictures of your materials or maybe your cardstock choices, pictures of your stamps, pictures of your hands actually making the item. You can also put a video in there. There's actually a, a space for you to put a video, and you could do a whole little video on how you make uh, your cards. Now, a lot of people don't like to be on camera, and I understand that. You don't have to, but just every bit of energy that you put into that will really get a return back because people are going to then really appreciate what they see above here. Now, all of a sudden, this isn't just a flat card. It's something that they've actually seen you create. Okay. All right. We're going to go back up here. Now your pricing looks good for the most part. Um, so I see you're using $349 and then you're using $399. I, I would urge you to, um, to kind of get set on one ending. In other words, you don't want $49 and $99. Either use $99 or $95, but use them all the same. So if this is $4.99 and $9.99, this needs to be $3.99. Okay? $3.99, $3.99. This is $39.99. This is $7.99. This needs to be $3.99 or $95, whichever you use. I think for cards, I would probably use $95 because cards really have more of a boutique kind of feel to them. So I think I would use $95, like $3.95, $7.95. Etc. But you can use the nine, the, the nine as well. Either the nine or the five is the good price point to have. Um, so I would change that. Um, also, I think I would raise my prices. Uh, I would expect if I'm going to get a handmade card, I would not expect to, to pay the same that I would pay for a Hallmark card. I feel like your prices are low. I don't know if maybe you offer uh, variations. Let me see here. You do not. So. Tell me why I'm getting um, a card for $349 when I can go to any card store and pay that. I could go to my grocery store and, and pay that for a card. I would expect to pay at least $599 for this card, at least for a handmade card. So I think you're definitely hurting yourself by not charging enough. Um, somebody that, again, you want to think about your target market. You may think, well, gosh, I don't know if I would pay $5.99 for a card or whatever, but you may not be your target market. Somebody that's going to buy a handmade card, they're buying it for a reason. They want something special, unique, something, uh, something that's quality made. So they definitely would expect to, I would change all of your three forty-nine and mark those up. I would not charge less than five dollars for a handmade card. So all of your cheaper cards here, I would have at four ninety-nine, and then the ones that are already four ninety-nine, bump those up to six ninety-five. Okay, definitely undercharging here. Now, your pictures need help. I understand that taking photos of cards are not easy. Um, I've had a few card makers over my time as being a handmade seller coach, and they all seem to struggle with their photos. Now, your photos are not terrible. They're much, much better than, than some that I have seen. Um, 
This one would actually be great if you had the lighting right and you removed your watermark. You don't want to have a watermark on any photo. Um, it, it, and that just, it hurts you in search, it hurts you um, in browse, it's just not, and it, it, honestly, if anybody was going to steal your design, they can remove this with simple photo editing software in seconds. So it's really pointless to even have it on there. Um, so I don't like the lines. See the wood vinyl background you have? So this is why I don't like the wood background. And a lot of people um, are using it now. But you have lines here that are going this way. Now in this one, your lines are going this way. And if you look down, the lines won't, won't match up. You see here, they have different, they're taking on different lighting. It just looks bad. Plus the lines uh, compete with your actual product. So I wouldn't use that at all. Now the gray, again, the gray is nice, but you gotta be careful with gray. You want your pictures to look light and bright. And if you don't have the lighting right, that gray can just kind of seep up all that light. And then you have kind of like, this looks even discolored here. Um, like here, it just isn't, it isn't a good, it isn't a good background. So let's look and see if I can find you some um, examples of, uh, of some good pictures of handmade cards. So this is nice here. And this background is still kind of that woodish, kind of wood grain, but there's no lines in it. It gives you that kind of shabby chic feel, and then there's more of a close-up here on the actual envelope and card. This is a nice picture. This isn't bad, this is a mock-up. So you could also do that, but um, but I think it I think it would look better if you actually with the cards if you took the pictures yourself. Um, here's a nice neutral background here. Too much busyness here. Now, 80% of sellers on Etsy do not take good pictures, so it's always, it's, it's not super easy to find a good example. This is pretty, but it's just too busy. This isn't bad, just plain white, and this is what I think you definitely could, could have in your shop with the little scissors and, uh, again, this, this looks like it's a mock-up as well. Yeah, I mean, look, as we're going through, what, which ones stand out to you? This is what you have to think about when you're going through and you're browsing, which ones really grab your eye? So like if I start at the top, you know, nothing really, nothing really grabs me. This does because it's on a white background and it's just kind of in your face right there, right? So you just slowly start to browse and look at what pops out at you. This does, again, it's cropped really close, not a lot of busyness. That's what you want to look for. Okay, this is nice and totally not in the right section. That's Etsy's wonderful search algorithm. Uh, this isn't bad with a little bit of ribbon in, in, in there. That's not bad if the lighting still isn't, isn't right. This would be good if they cropped it a lot closer and you didn't have all this outside area. And remember your branding, you want it to go, <laughs> This is a great picture here. It's a little turned a little too to the side, but if this was if this was a different kind of maybe this way, this would be a great picture. So what you want is you want your cards front and center. You don't want a lot of staging. You want it to be light and bright, but you really got to watch your lighting. That's super important. Um, I recommend, and I don't know if you've seen my critiques before, but and I recommend this background to a lot of people. But I just can't help it. It's such a great background. Ink and Elm, which is one of my favorite shops on Etsy, um, they sell the photography backdrops, right? Well, they have this backdrop right here. This is like my, my all-time favorite. Now, they have this in a smaller size. You don't have to get the six feet by five feet. But here you have this nice uh, shabby chic, cottage chic kind of background. And it is the wood. It's distressed. But you don't have those big bulky lines 
that you have in the other wood backdrops. Um, but you might want to look at them. They also have a lot of other beautiful backdrops. This one's nice. Again, it doesn't have a lot of lines in it. It's still light and bright. Um, you know, maybe look through there. And, and hey, that might have been where you actually got your, your backdrop before. Sorry, my back button is like right over my record button. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, let's do this again. We need to fix that on screencast o -matic. Okay. Go back into your shop. So that'll give you some idea. You know, something else you could do is if you just don't feel comfortable or if you're just not quite getting it, hire a product photographer. Seriously, send, I don't know if these cards are cards that you can mimic. That would be a good question for you. Are these ones that you can do over and over and over again? Or are these all one of a kind? I would hope there's something that you can duplicate for the most part um, because that's just, there's no way to scale your business with one of a kind items. But, um, you know, send send a, a whole envelope full of them out to Brandy Inman or Amanda Radigan. I would suggest Brandy Inman, I think, for, for the card. Amanda Radigan does a lot of uh, model shoots. Um, but do a lifestyle shot, you know, where you can actually, you know, you see there's somebody opening their card or their card or Brandy could do one on a, on a table with a really beautiful natural light uh, background. That will do so much for your business. I cannot tell you, and I, and I tell my, my clients this all the time, and for some reason they just, they feel that the photography is good enough, it's something they just don't really have the, they don't wanna bother with right now, they wanna fix everything else, and it's just, you can fix everything else in your shop and if the picture isn't beautiful and it's not um, bringing them in, then it, it won't, you won't have the sales that you could have. I'm going to pause this for just a moment. Let my dog out. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we went over your pricing and your pictures. Let's look at your SEO real quick, okay? All right. <clears throat> so, okay, let's talk about this. You know, this is the importance of words here. When you're talking about SEO, we're talking about how you optimize your listing on Etsy, right? And, and currently that is done by the keywords you put in the title, which is right here, and your tags here. <clears throat> now there's a lot of other factors that go into SEO with Etsy, like sales and um, you know, recency, relevancy, all that kind of stuff. But when we're talking about keywords, and the relevancy that they have in search, you want to make sure that you're using keyword phrases that are a mix of both general and targeted, and you want them to be obviously um, a popular search term or one that people are using to look for your items. Now, if this were me, I would search handmade Mother's Day card. That's not coming up. Now, probably because Mother's Day is Sunday, or next Sunday, so it may not be a big search term right now, but we got Mother's Day card. So we have Mother's Day card. Now let's look and see how many searches. 47,000 results for something with a Mother's Day card. And let's just see if yours comes up in the first five pages. That would be awesome. <clears throat> and by the way, I'm kind of noticing here as I'm scrolling in the prices. A lot of people are at 450, 525, 540, 8 dollars, 425, here's a 369, 241, that's probably hopefully a digital download. So remember, you want to be mid to high. So your 499 price point or 495 price point would be a great price point among all of these. 
Okay, um, do, 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 do. so I'm not seeing yours on there unless I missed it, but I don't see, I've been looking for the mandala looking thing, and I don't see that. So, <clears throat> so you're not ranking in the first five pages for Mother's Day cards, which, I mean, if you don't sell a lot of Mother's Day cards and you don't have Mother's Day card as your actual, um, first keyword, then that's understandable. Um, so let's look and see if you have Mother's Day card over here. No, maybe holiday cards, it would probably be under, I don't, oh yeah, there it is. So I don't know, again, if I would use hand stamped Mother's Day card. Um, yeah, I would probably, I if it were me, I think I would do Mother's Day card, space dash space handmade mother's day card space dash space hand let's see if we could find handcrafted card for mom space dash space um i know it's hard because it's like how many ways can you describe this, um, how about gift for her, or even gift for mom, gift for mom, gift for brother, mom, mother, gift for mom. So you could use those as well. Um, it's hard when you have just a specific card and it's for a specific reason, but you want to try to think of all the different ways that people would search for that. Unique cards, that's another one that came up. See, it's there. So that would be something cool too. Someone's, hey, I'm looking for something unique. You could try that. When you get all of your keywords or your keyword phrases and you have them here in your title and you're using space dash space, which I love, copy that and then put them down here into your tags. And you may have that. Oh, there you have card for mom and card for mom. You want duplication here. This is really the only place that you want duplication. So you want your same keywords or keyword phrases that are in your title also down here in your tags. Now, if let's say, like, for example, hand stamp Mother's Day card that's too big because you only have 20 characters down in your tags, then you would split it up like hand stamped card, Mother's Day card. You could do that down in your tags as well. And remember, anytime that you have your keywords and you sprinkle them throughout your copy, that also helps you. Now what you do want to do is you want to have some interlinking in here. And this isn't interlinking because it's not showing as an Etsy link. Um, but say like if you would like to see our other handmade um, Mother's Day cards or holiday cards, click here and have that go to that link or this section in your shop. That'll also help it help you strengthen your SEO. Again, you have some time here. I would probably change this. I would not put a hand stamped Father's Day card. Hand stamped cards. I'll just do Father's Day card. Father's Day card funny. Father's Day card from wife. Those are all good. Card for dad, so you want to think about that too, because people are not always searching for the dad part in front; they're searching it in the in the back. Um, card for husband, that's another good one too. Okay, Let's see if your your copy looks good to me. You have a decent amount. You're selling it here, which is good. 
Yeah, I, I like it. So I don't think you're having any issues there. I think you need to work on some SEO, maybe switch up some some of your uh, titles. Let's look at like maybe a basic card, let's say baby shower card. So you have baby shower card, gender reveal card, that's a good one, baby boy card, congratulations card. Stamp it up, again, I don't know, maybe um, crafters would know what that what that means. New baby card, new parent card. Okay, let's say, how about a baby announcement? Baby announcement might be a good one to put in there. New baby card is a good one. Baby shower card is good. But what about baby boy, baby boy card? You have that. How about a boy baby shower? Might be a good one, just boy baby shower. Gender reveal is awesome because that's trending right now, so it's good that you have that. Welcome baby boy, that'd be another good one. Welcome baby card. So just make sure you're checking all your keywords and your keyword phrases. If you find that you're not getting a lot of views on a listing, maybe switch it up. Oh good, this one clicks, so this is perfect. Okay, honestly, I think you're doing a lot of stuff really well. I would adjust your pricing and work on your photos. Then, you know, look, of course, on your SEO. If you feel like your views are low, I don't know how many views you're getting, but if you feel that your, your views are low, um, switch up some of those words in your titles. Make sure they match your tags. But overall, I really think your pictures uh, and your pricing needs the most work. So adjust those things. Um, work on, on replacing uh, good photos, add that slideshow to your about page, and I think you'll be good to go for sure. Um, just remember the seasons. Um, please stay up on that because we have graduation is, is right around the corner. Um, I mean, it's some, some people are graduating now, and I see this congrats card, but I don't really see any graduating, and that's like a big deal. Um, especially for your target audience. I would think a handmade graduation card, something that they could keep, put in their, their um, uh, what's that called? Not a treasure chest, their hope chest, if they're a girl, or their scrapbooking or something, you know, or just to keep, um, to remember that 2017. Uh, I definitely think that's something that would be big um, right now in your shop. Also, you have, um, you already have Father's Day, we have 4th of July, I don't, I don't know if you would really do a card for 4th of July, um, but birthdays, and then we got all kinds of other exciting things happening over the summertime. So, I would maybe add in a lot more baby showers, a lot of more baby shower cards, uh, wedding cards, I don't, I don't, I see anniversary and love. Um, I think wedding cards would be huge just because, again, it's one of those events where you want to have something that they're going to keep and, and have as a keepsake to remember their special day. So I would probably add in a little, a little more product surrounding those big events in life that uh, people would want to buy handmade cards for, um, that they would be willing to go that extra mile, pay a little more for something special. Okay, well, I hope this helped, and if you have any questions, of course, you can um, just message me on Facebook or tag me on the wall in any of the Flourish groups, and I'm so happy um, that I was able to do this today, and I hope it helps. So have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.